Hello, my lovelies, and welcome back to Listen Closely, Season 3. I cannot believe it. We are already on Season 3, which means we've been doing this for quite a while. If you don't already know, my name is Bobby. I am your host, who will be sharing all the different spooky, true crime, paranormal, a little bit of everything, honestly. If you don't already, please remember to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, I'm all over the place. You can find me basically the same way every time by looking up at HTT, listen closely. And if you want to email me, let me know how I'm doing. Or if you want to get in touch with me with doing some collab work or anything like that, you can email me HTT, listen closely at gmail.com. Super easy. I make it easy as I can so that way you can find me. Also, don't forget to subscribe to me on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, wherever you're listening to me. Make sure you subscribe so that way you can get those notifications. And if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, I ask that you leave a review and five stars. It can only help me. And with that, let's get started. For this episode, we are traveling to Houston, Texas, about two hours away from me. So I've gone many times. We are talking about the Jefferson Davis Hospital. So this hospital was first opened in 1924, and it was the actually the first city hospital that was a charity hospital, which means that it was the first hospital to welcome everybody. It didn't matter if you were poor, rich, black, white. I mean, it didn't matter. And in those times, that is like a huge thing because, of course, we're talking about the 1920s. There is still a whole lot of political things going on as far as the racism and, you know, separation and segregation and things like that. And obviously with the classism back in the day. So this was actually a amazing thing that they opened up this charity hospital for the area. And it was in operation from 1924 to 1938, but it was then replaced by a more modern one due to the old equipment, obviously, and then uh, the demand. This hospital was located at the 1101 Elder Street in Houston, Texas, which is about north of downtown. So if you've gone to Houston, you know downtown, and it's just a little bit north of there. So it's a pretty good area. Like, you know, it's a pretty good centralized area. Now, after the building was abandoned and replaced with that more modern hospital, It actually became many different things throughout history. So it became a storage building for the juvenile detention center where they basically just held all the files and also was at one point a rehab clinic where people on probation had to check in to for the like the drug charges. In 1985, it was fully abandoned and stood vacant until 2005. Now the Houston City Council did come together and in 2013 it actually became a protected historical site for the city which is an amazing thing so basically they wanted to preserve this building preserve that history and when you designate buildings as protected historical sites they are eligible for grants to build them back up and bring it back to their former glory. So that's exactly what Houston did. Now they have done many renovations in this building, but again, with that now protected historical site, they're able to do so much more. They brought this building back to life and now it is the Elder Street Artist Lofts. So that's where they rent spaces and have privately owned events there. So it is private property currently. So Do not go over there. I mean, if you do go, you can kind of like take pictures on the outside, but definitely don't trample on anybody's home. I mean, it is their homes. So with all that being said, you're probably wondering, why are we talking about this hospital? Well, if you've ever seen Poltergeist, you'll know like what's happening. So in Poltergeist, the movie, the family buys a home in this now like developed area. Lo and behold, it comes to find out, by the way, spoiler alerts, if you haven't seen it, you need to. But they realized that the development company built the home on top of an Indian burial ground, which is why they're having such huge problems with spirits and why the little girl got taken and, you know, just things like that. And then they had to basically put the bones back and say sorry. And it was a whole ordeal. Well, in a nutshell, that's basically what happens here, except nobody's put any bones back. So the land that this hospital was built on was actually an old city cemetery. So the first city cemetery was way overcrowded in 1840. So they had to create a new area for people to be buried in. And that's exactly what this land had became. People were buried at this location up until 1895. 
And at that point, that's when they decided, you know what, it's still, it got overcrowded even more. You had the Confederate soldiers, you had slaves, you had victims of the yellow fever and cholera epidemic. So that cemetery got overcrowded as well as the first one. So they had to build another location for their dead. And so this one was basically just left to to rot and decay. Now, we talked about, you know, the kind of epidemics in the past. So the yellow fever and cholera epidemics, when people were passing to that, there was such a large amount of people who were passing away due to these epidemics that they couldn't just create single graves for every single person. And we've seen this several times in my episodes. So what they had to do was create mass graves. So they just dug huge, you know, holes in the ground and then just put the bodies in them. So a lot of these graves are actually unmarked in this area. You did have, you know, some city eldermen and like I said, some soldiers and people of that nature. And they were marked graves there but with the epidemic that had happened during this time there was just no way that they can do it all so you did have some areas that were unmarked and again they were burying people here up until 1895 so that's 1840 to 1895 is when they were burying people and then 1924 is when the hospital actually opened so of course they had some construction time and things like that so it was probably around the 1900s or, you know, 1915. I don't, I'm not too sure how long it took them back in the day. But I mean, it was a couple of years or at least a year before they opened this hospital that they had to do all the construction. And you may be asking yourself, why did they pick this land? Like they could have picked anywhere. Well, they chose this land because again, it was just north of downtown and in a basically centralized Houston, which was a booming area It was an easy place to get to at the time, even back then. So they chose this. They said, you know what? We're not doing anything with it. It's already going to decay and not maintained at all. We need the land. So let's just go ahead and use that land. So what they did was they dug up most of the bodies that they could find, but not all of them. So again, because of those mass graves that were unmarked, they didn't know 100% if they got all the bodies. And while building this hospital, they decided that they would build the basement above the ground. And that was a little bit easier for them. So that way they didn't have to worry about, are we going to hit a body? Are we not going to hit a body? Like they basically skirted around the whole thing. And so they built the basement above the ground. And that basement was actually used for the African-American patients to enter and exit. Because again, this is segregation times. So that's what they use that basement for. So you can basically understand, like, this is not a good idea. Now, again, they did not have Poltergeist back in this time as a movie, but all of us right now, like, I know I was thinking it when I heard this, and I'm sure you're thinking it. You're like, hello, this is a terrible idea. You want Poltergeist? Because this is how you get Poltergeist. Like, I had the exact same idea. I'm with you. Like, this is a terrible thing. And of course, this hospital was basically doomed from the get-go. So as soon as they opened their doors, they started to get a lot of strange happenings throughout the entire hospital and that they would hear like screams and mutterings and things like that, as well as full body apparitions that they would see at the actual nurse's quarter, which is where the nurses would stay who attended the hospital. They had to stay close by so that way that they could care for the patients. So actually in the nurse's quarter, there was even more strange things. There were strange noises. There is said to have been a woman's speech spirit that was active there as well as nowadays police dogs are supposedly they just did not want to go in there like when the police would come because this was a vacant area so they would have to come and make sure everything was secure if they got any calls or anything and the police dogs were like "Uh uh-uh we're not going over there we're not crazy which they're pretty smart I wouldn't necessarily go there like if I knew everything I wouldn't have been like nah I'm not going now obviously me now I would want to go because this is This is what I do, but no, I would not want to go to this area at all. So I don't blame the dogs and dogs are supposedly highly sensitive to the spiritual or, you know, the otherworldly things. So if a dog's saying I'm not going, I'm definitely not going. Throughout the hospital, they would see soldiers. So again, there was a lot of soldiers that were buried here because of the war, you know, the civil war that was happening. And many of those soldiers actually did die of cholera and yellow fever and things like that. So there was a lot of people buried here, as we said, 
and some of them were soldiers. So throughout the entire hospital, there are said to have been soldiers. When the hospital closed, that didn't stop the spirits from happening. So what happened? Well, from 1985 to 2003, it was a completely vacant area. We're not vacant, but you know, it was a place that you can actually go visit. So what happened was you can actually go ghost hunting. It was an open building to where you can enter, you can explore, do ghost hunting and, you know, see if you can catch anything, which of course attracted many people. I probably would have gone myself if I was as crazy as I am now. I'm not saying everybody's crazy, but it's, it's intriguing. And I definitely would have gone you know, different people would go ghost hunt. They'd make, you know, a weekend of it or a day of it, world night of it. And photographers would obviously go and get these beautiful pictures of how the building is faring after so long. Well, of course, it had to come to an end. So in 2003, a group of ghost hunters went in and started their ghost hunt. Well, because this is an open building that anyone can enter... That includes transients, that includes people on drugs, as well as homeless. I mean, it's just, it includes everybody. Anybody can go into this. And unfortunately for that group, they were met by some not friendly people who actually robbed them at gunpoint. Now, the gun did fire, but there were no injuries. The police were called and unfortunately they could not find the people who were responsible for this. And the city of Houston decided, you know what, this is too big of a risk. We're not going to take that. So they shut the building completely down. And that's where it stayed for two years until those renovations kind of started. So fast forwarding a little bit to now at times, the main hospital did get that historical site designation, but that did not include the nurse's quarters, which is a building to the side of it. Well, the city of Houston decided we need to also include that into this designation. So they had drawn up the paperwork. They had meetings about it in several different groups I was helping out. Well, they did it. They were in the process of getting it fully designated as an addition to this hospital. So it was going to be included in this historical site. Unfortunately, January 2017, there were horrible storms in our area. Houston was especially hit with these and they had catastrophic flooding and bad damage in general with the high winds and just loaded on with rain. And unfortunately, the storm damaged the nurses' quarters. The roof was damaged in this storm. It had a partial collapse as well as one of the outer walls of the building also had a bunch of damage to it. Because of this, they decided it was too far gone for it to actually be included in this historical site. So they actually decided, you know, we're just going to go ahead and see about condemning it and bulldozing it because it was just so far gone. There was basically not much left of the original building and structurally not sound. They did get approved, I saw, to actually uh, tear it down, but I have not actually seen anything about it actually being torn down. So this all happened in 2017. It is now 2021. I cannot find really that much. They said, yes, it did get, it was going to get torn down, but I haven't actually seen anything about it tearing down. Now, this could also be a part of the current virus that's happening with why it's being delayed. Or it could be some groups that are actually delaying it. I'm not too sure. If you find anything, definitely share it with me so that way I can post that information. The main hospital building, the reason that it did not sustain damage or the extent to this is because they did do those renovations earlier on because it was designated already. So they had that grant money to fix it up. It became those lofts for the artists. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, if people are living there now, are they experiencing anything? Well, one artist uh, did talk with the media and said it is the most boring haunted place that they've ever lived at. I'm not sure if they're just saying that because they truly have not experienced anything or if they're just trying to get people to not go to their place of living. Because like I said, they do live here. The artists have kind of formed a watch group so that way people can't trespass. This building was open for a long time to the public, but because it was renovated and it became these lofts, they are no longer open to the public. You can still go by and take pictures of the outside, but many of them basically don't want you to go in because you're intruding on their privacy. They don't want people to come and disrespect their homes. 
They did apparently have some people who would come drunk and trying to tear stuff up back there. So, I mean, it's it's reasonable. It's reasonable that you don't want somebody to just come into your home and break it and disrespect it in any means. So I don't blame them, but I'm not too sure if it's haunted or not anymore. Again, that one person did speak out and said that, no, they have not experienced anything. Maybe they just have one of the areas that aren't as active, or maybe they're just saying that to get people to not go over there. Now, they do open up every now and then for events um, that is open to the public. So if you happen to catch one of those events, I believe the last one was in 2019 is what I saw on their website. Again, the pandemic kind of stopped all of these gatherings from happening, but they do occasionally open it up to the public. And if you do get a chance to go, don't go exploring and go into people's apartments. Definitely don't do that. But I mean, you're more than welcome to go and see if you feel anything out of the ordinary. Like always, I will post any pictures or articles that I find on this uh, particular area. There have been plenty of news reports on it due to it being a historical site now. And the damage that the nurses' quarters sustained. So there are a lot of articles on this, but I'll try and see if I can rein them all in and make it a little bit easier for you. I would definitely say go check it out, at least the outside of this building. It is very beautiful, and it actually still has a Jefferson Davis Hospital imprinted in the actual building. And that's beautiful that they can bring these buildings back to life. We here in Silsby are trying to do that very same thing with the Pines. Uh, We just got that designated last year for a historical site. So we are able to receive more grants and hopefully our citizens can help us build that up and make it beautiful just like they did with this. I mean, I know they have plans for the Pines Theater. Uh, We discussed that in the first season, I believe. It's crazy that we've gone so far. But yeah, I believe in the first season I did cover the Pines Theater They've got plenty of plans for that, just like uh, these Houstonians, I guess. I don't really know how they say Houston. Houstonians. I'm not sure. Somebody let me know on how to say that. But they changed that building and repurposed it and made it amazing. And it does have one of those Texas Historical Places placard. And I will share that. Definitely go check it out. Is one to check out at least once. I know me and my husband go to these different places. We love to see those placards. Like anytime we see those, we pull over, we read them, we learn history. It actually helps me with this podcast because I'm like, oh yeah, I remember reading that. And it's just a great thing to do. My family's always done it. Me and my husband are continuing to do it because we're both huge history buffs. So definitely it's something to do with the family. As always, please be respectful no matter where you go. Only leave footprints. And if you can do one thing, always remember to listen closely.